Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here once again. If you are new to my channel, we build video games. So I've recently finished an entire course on how to build games in MakeCode Arcade. You should check that out if you don't already know how to do that. And now I'm working my way through a series on the extensions that we can use to make our games even better. So this is a fun one. Today we're looking at button combos. I really like this extension. My biggest complaint about it is that I wish they went just a little bit further, but we'll talk about all that in a minute. So in the extension area, of course, we've already covered most of these right here. The last one we just did is the color-coded tile map. After that, we've got a few of these Adafruit um, extensions here. So the feather and the seesaw, I'm not gonna be covering those because I don't have the right hardware for them, but those are designed for certain pieces of equipment, I'm assuming made by a company called Adafruit. All right, this one in the middle, in between them, uh, I will click on just to show you guys what it is. This is probably the smallest extension in the whole bunch. It's literally just some free pictures. So if you, once you've downloaded it, you're gonna see nothing new popped up in the toolbox. But if I go to create a new sprite and I go into the gallery, you will see there's a couple new images that weren't there before. So kind of cool, I have to admit, you know, uh, very, very small as far as the world of extensions go. But these are pretty interesting looking sprites. I kind of like them, not gonna lie. All right, so there's, I'll just grab that one real quick so you can guys can see that. So the main one that we're gonna be doing for today is the button combos. So after the Adafruit, you have button combos right here. I love this extension. So button combos unlocks so much potential as a programmer on ways that you can have your players interact in the game. Normally, you guys know that, oh, let me scroll down. These are the normal options that you have, right? You have on A button press, B button press, left, up, right, down. There's also a menu button and an any button. So these are the options that you are limited to as, from a programming perspective. So what if you wanted to create a button combo? Could you do that without this extension? And what I mean by button combos is like you press two buttons in an order. Yes, you could still do that, right? It would just be difficult because you'd have to do something like this. And then inside of it, you'd have to use some logics and you'd have to put some of these in there, right? It, it, it would not be easy. I've seen students do it. I've had students do it. It's not easy to do button combos on your own. So this extension is super awesome, super helpful. Let's take a look at it. So once you add the button combo extension, it does not show up in the toolbox because it's in the controller section. In fact, you just saw it a second ago. When I go to controllers, it's right here. They move it to the top of the toolbox. Um, I'm, I don't know why they do that. I would have thought it would have kept it at the bottom, but they moved it to the top, I guess just to make it easier to find. And here's the main block button that you use, the main block that you use, I meant to say on button combination. So on button combination, and then it has the quotes. So if you've been building in make code, you already know what that means. Quotes mean it is only for text, text only. So what do you put inside of those quotes? This is where we use some abbreviation shorthand to do our button combos. This is how it looks. If you wanna do the up button, you just press U. If you want to do down, it's D. Left is L, right is R. The A button is symbolized by A. The B button is symbolized by B. So to do a button combo, I write those buttons in, I'm sorry, I write those letters in the order that I need the buttons to be pressed. So if you're thinking about a game where maybe it's a fighter game and you do an uppercut move. So if you've ever played fighting games, usually the uppercut is done by doing down and then up. So like you squat down and then you press up and it's an uppercut, right? If I wanted to do a button combo like that, I would code it down up, D-U. And now I have a button combo that I can use for an uppercut move if I wanted to, right? So here, we'll just code something real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And I will give the sprite a velocity in the negative direction. Woohoo. So let's see it work. If I press down, nothing happens. If I press up, now he did it because it was down up, right? Now you'll notice there was a long pause between my down and my up. Did you guys see that? I had a long pause there. 
Normally when you're doing button combos, you don't want a long pause. So in the combo section, there's also a set combo timeout. This limits the time period that people are allowed to do combos in. So if I wanted it to be a shorter period, I'd probably use something like 500 is what I usually use in games because half a second requires a pretty fast duo. So let's check it out again. So if I press down now and I wait and I press up, it's not gonna do anything, right? So down, up, nothing happens. But if I press them quickly, down, up, and there we go, right? So having the co combo timeout is a good part, a good way of managing how quickly players can do the combos. And there's a lot of different combos they can do here. Let's just make it easier. I'm going to replace it with a save block so you guys can just see it and the sprite doesn't move every time. Um, so I'm just going to say combo here. So whenever we complete the combo, you'll see him say combo. So you can do this, as I mentioned, with up, down, left, right, A, or B. And you can have a whole string of them. So for instance, if I left this here, this would literally be up, down, left, right, A, B. Which one's A and B on my keyboard? Okay, A is Z, B is X. All right, so if I go up, down, left, right, A, B, it didn't work. Up, down, left, right, A, B? Hmm. Up, down. Oh, I did down, up. Ha, ha. I was doing my combo wrong. Up, down, left, right, A, B. Up, down, left, right. Oh, up, down. There we go. Took a few tries for me to get the combo right, but it worked. Here, let's put a time limit on that so it doesn't stay up. All right, so that's the basic combo, and those are the letters you would use, but that's not all you can do with it. As I mentioned, this is a pretty fun extension and gives you a lot of creative power. You can also do, use the plus sign. So what does the plus sign do? If I did A plus B, let me show you how that works. So I have A plus B as my new combo. If I press A and then B, nothing happens. A, B, nothing's happening. A plus B means that I have to press them both at the same time, A and B together. Boom. So A and B together is now setting off the combo. You can even have them in a series and a combo. So maybe, uh, I keep on thinking about fighting games because when I do combos, I'm usually doing fighting games. Um, maybe A, A, A plus B. So in order to trigger this combo, I have to press A, A, and then I have to press A and B together. It's gonna be a hard combo to do, but let's try it. A, A, oh, I did it right away, first try. A, 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 B, A, B together. Yep, it worked. So you can get really, really, really creative with your button combos as a programmer. So this can unlock so many potential options in your game. For instance, you know, you're very limited with MakeCode. You only have the A and B buttons. Up, down, left, right, A, B doesn't seem like a lot of buttons, but with combos, you can do a lot more with them. So for instance, maybe in your game, A button causes your character to jump. Well, maybe if they squat and press A, they can pick up an object. Maybe if they're pressing A, while moving forward, they can slide instead of jumping, right? So you can do all sorts of interesting things with these combos. You can unlock a lot more potential for your games. All right, let's go back to the other ones here. This one right here, I don't really have a need for this, but this is basically another way of doing what we just did. So here you have the arrows up, down, left, right, A, B, and then also the plus sign. The purpose of this if it's easier for you to visualize, basically, you can use the join block and you can put these together. So you can have up and down and make as many of these as you want to and put this in that button combo. So it does the same thing as the letters, which is why I prefer the letters because it's less steps. But this will do the same thing. So this is an up down combo that would happen if I press up and then down, right? So. If that helps you as a visual learner to have the arrows instead of the letters, it's an option, but you would have to use the join block when doing that. Okay, remove combo. So this is a cool one. What if you want a combo to only work once? What if it is a super powered combo and you don't want the players to use it all the time? You just remove it. So you could have in here, 
remove combo and put the same combo. So here, I'll keep it simple just for the sake of this video. We'll do, you know what, let's do A plus B. That was a good one. So when I do A plus B, it will work only one time now because after I run it, it immediately removes the combo. So if I go in, A plus B, I got the combo. Now I'm gonna do it again and nothing, right? So by removing the combo, I am able to limit how often the player can use it. So that's that's kind of handy, especially if it's a super powered combination that you don't want them to abuse. All right. Where you talked about combo timeout, combo trigger. I don't really feel like I've used this one on each press on timeout. OK, so when do you want the trigger to happen? Do you want it to be when they press it or after, I, I don't know, that's kind of weird. I've never had a need to use that. All right, so let's keep going. Extended combo mode. I, I have used this before, but it's been a long time. Okay, so what the message here says is if extended combo mode is on, allow multiple sequences to trigger from the same input. Okay, I think I get that now. So let's, let me show you what I mean. So let's go ahead, turn extended combo on. So if we had two combos that used similar buttons, so here we have A plus B says combo. And then earlier we had an AAA plus B, right? Let's have that do something different. That will change the background color so we can see it. All right, so A plus B will say the word combo. AAA plus B will turn the background green. So if I do AAA plus B, it should trigger both of these, right? Let's see if it works. A, A, oop, I did that wrong. A, A, B, there we go. It triggered both of them. So you can decide in your game, do you want to allow multiple combos to happen at once or not? And that is what extended combo mode does. I forgot about that one. It's been a while since I've used it. Okay, special combination is basically the Konami code. So if I use special combo, It will be triggered by a special pre-programmed combination, which is up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. And there it is. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. All right. So that's just a pre-programmed combination that has some historical significance in video gaming. So that's pretty much all you need to know about button combos. As I mentioned, the positive about this is that it unlocks a whole bunch more possibilities as the programmer on things that your player can do in game. My one negative, as I mentioned earlier, is that I wish they made it bigger. And what I mean by that is there's nothing in here for multiplayer. That I feel like is a huge missed opportunity, right? If they had multiplayer options, so you could do button combos for player A and for player B, then you'd be able to make some pretty cool fighting games, right? And unfortunately, that's not an option here. So if you were to build a two-player fighting game and you had to do button combos, you would have to code them yourself in the much longer way it would seem. If you know another way of doing it, if you know a shortcut or a way to make this work with multiplayers, please let me know in the comments because I would love to be able to do that with this extension. Okay, so... With that said, I feel like we are at the wrapping point of this video. It was a nice short video, pretty straightforward. If you learned something new today, please click that like button. If you used the button combos to make something cool, please share it with me by clicking the share icon and copying the link and putting it in the comments. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and don't forget to tell your friends and family about this page so that they too can come and build fun video games. All right, I'll see you guys later.